Hey, it's Joe Tamargo from WetHeadPumpRepair.com. All right, welcome back to the premium DVD of the Hydromax Dimension One Spa Pump. If you've bought the premium D, we thank you, and you're probably not even hearing this message. But if you're watching this video on YouTube, then you probably are getting a free snippet or a clip. This is part three of the Hydromax pump. In part one, we showed you how to take apart the wet end. Uh, part two, we showed you how to remove the impeller, which is part of the wet end. And in part three, we're going to show you now how to remove the stationary switch and the motor governor. Because you need to move, remove the, the stationary switch and the motor governor. That way, you can take out the shaft later on. We're also going to show you in step four how to remove the four through bolts and how to remove the seal housing. And then in step five, we're going to show you how to remove the end bells and the armature. Step six, we're going to show you how to uh, change the bearings. And step seven, we're going to start putting it back together. All right, so let's continue on here. All parts are available at wetheadpumprepair.com. Uh, in the kit comes the bearings and the seals to fix this pump. That way you get your pump running again. All right, so here we go. We're going to turn this motor around. Uh, the wrench is still on it from part two. If you've seen part two, uh, you know I had the wrench on there so I could hold the shaft. Um, I can still continue to leave the wrench there if I'd like. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this, this triangle switch, which is also called a stationary switch. Uh, what you're going to do is take a nut driver, and you're going to put that on the bolt that is on the stationary switch. Now, once again, if you've seen part two, you know my nut driver is a piece of crap. And excuse my language, but it doesn't really work that well. So there you go. Now I had to push a little bit of weight into it to loosen it up. You know what I'm talking about. If you got old tools, like you say, put your ass into it. Excuse my language. Well, I did. There you go. And that's a big one at that. All right. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to loosen up that switch now. All right. So there we go. To loosen that up with the nut driver counterclockwise. And I know today everything's digital. So that means to the left because you're like, uh, my clock doesn't turn, man. It's on my iPad. All right, well, fine, you got me there, okay. So there you go, counterclockwise, which is to the left. Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, okay? So there you go. I'm going to turn this here right now. If I could get my nut driver back on there. Okay, <laughs> hold on one second. Let me get my nut driver back on there. I couldn't see it for a minute. I had too much uh, glare from the lights. All right, so there we go. Once I remove this bolt, you will see this little metal bracket will fall out, and I will show you how to put that back in the letter. Do not panic. Okay, and then the switch is here. Now, you always want to make sure you inspect the contacts of the switch, okay, to look make sure they're good. We're going to be showing you up close in a second what we mean by that, okay, because sometimes if the contacts are worn, uh, for a lot of the older gentlemen who are watching my videos, thank you for serving your country because you've probably been involved in some more. Uh, if you haven't, thank you for watching the videos. And um, even so, for the rest of you people, um, or whoever else is watching, uh, the misses and the mams or whoever else is out there, there's two contacts on these. And sometimes those contacts go bad, and when they go bad or they get uneven, they don't, they don't start. So if you've already rebuilt your motor and you've been referenced to this video, um, you want to check those contacts. And we're going to show you an uh, upload close look at those contacts in a few minutes. Okay, so next thing you want to do now is I have a small pair of channel locks like this. I want to remove these two springs, and I can do so by grabbing the top. Now, you see here, there's holes up top here, okay, just like that, uh, and on top, on the top, on the bottom, and there's little slide-offs. So when you remove these, what you want to do is you want to remove it from the top, okay, like this, okay, just like that. That will allow you to e uh, remove it easily. There you go. That's my one spring there, and then I'm going to remove my second spring. Now, I'm going to remove my wrench here, all right, for one second, and I'm going to pull off my second spring. Just like this, I'm going to grab it, I'm going to hold my shaft on this side, and I'm going to remove my second spring here, okay? Now, once I remove my second spring, I'm going to start taking apart the motor governor, okay? Here we go, take that spring out. There you go, you can see that spring is out now. All right, so now you have the governor, okay? Here's the governor arm, the, the flap. So, what a lot of guys like to do, or I like to do, you can just bend this piece a little bit, just a tiny bit, and then this piece will come out. Um, some people wedge it out, some people turn it out. You can also take a flathead screwdriver and you can just bend it out like this, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my pair of channel locks and I'm just going to bend this arm a little, okay? And once I bend the arm a little, that will allow that governor piece to come out. See that? It came out just like that. Now, I have a lot of other videos. Don't get panic if it's a little far away. I have a lot of other, other videos that show you how to take this out up close. It's called the UST Motor Repair. Um, and I'm also going to show you in this video series as well how to do that up close and far away. Now, what the last thing you got left there is you got a flathead screw. Okay, so now like we showed you before, you want to put your wrench back on to the shaft, and then you'll have that flat spot like that. And now you want to take a flathead screwdriver in a large size. Now, there are different size screwdrivers. 
Now, this is one from like somebody's grandfather's tool chest. Probably came from a garage sale, but there are different sizes. Like this would be a number three, this would be another two, and there's actually a smaller one. You know, not the one you use for your glasses. That's a whole different size in itself. But there's number one. So you want to use like a large number three screwdriver because see that that flathead screw in the back there. That's pretty large, so you don't want to be using something small because what's going to happen is going to strip off there. And then you're going to be like, oh my god, dude, I can't get it off. And you're using the wrong size screwdriver. So you want to just get this uh, wrench on the flat spot now. There we go. I'm going to get my wrench on the flat spot there, brace it into position against this part of the motor. And then I'm take my flathead screwdriver and I'm going to loosen this up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to place my flathead screwdriver right and directly in the center of that. And once I do so, you can see it's now loosening up. Let me tilt this towards you guys. So you can see that, okay, so I'm going to put my flathead screwdriver back on there again, so it'll see with the light, and then you go, see, right, there you go. Alright, so I'm going to just take off this flathead screw, just like that, and that's it. Okay, so there's one part of the governor, there's my second part of the governor, and then I'm going to need my two springs, here's my one spring here. Uh, there's my, oh, there you go, there's my other spring there. Here's the part, this is the bolt that holds that switch on there. Here's my capacitor screw, my capacitor bracket, and then here's my center screw from the governor that goes in here, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to put this all back together later so don't panic. All right, so there you go. We have now removed the whole back end of that shaft, just like that, see that? Looks good, right? All right, there you go. The whole back end of the shaft is removed. Okay, so now what are we gonna do now? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a break. So if you're watching the premium DVD, you didn't hear me say that. I'm just gonna keep, keep continuing on. If we're on YouTube, thanks for watching. Remember, all parts are available at wetheadpumprepair.com. This concludes part three for the YouTube section. Uh, so be sure to look for part four, the Hydromax Pump Repair part four. We're gonna be showing you how to remove the four through bolts and take off the wet end. And then in part five, uh, the wet end housing and then uh, the seal housing and then in part six We're gonna be taking apart the end bells and removing the armature. All right, so thanks for watching all parts available at wetheadpumpprepare.com. See you in the next video. Peace